What up? Your boy, the Lexman. Finally, I have a second to talk about WWE SmackDown live this week. So, I'm not going to do the whole, this is what happened at the beginning, this is what happened at the end, we're going to go in order. No. I think it's a little late to be doing the traditional review. I'm just up here to give you guys my thoughts. I'm going to talk about what I remember about the show, and then have... A small tangent? I mean, it's not a reflection of the show because SmackDown was good. I felt like, well, everything revolving around WrestleMania weekend and the shows afterwards were good. I thought the Hall of Fame was great. Loved the Hall of Fame. Loved all the speeches. DDP, Beth Phoenix. I liked the Rock and Roll Express. I even liked Rick Rude's son. He was cool. My favorite was Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle was the man. He was awesome. It was good seeing him back. And he just made me smile and laugh. He was very entertaining. The quintessential WWE performer. And yes, I definitely thought he had the best speech of the night. Probably one of the best speeches I've ever heard. Period. NXT TakeOver was good. Uh, Loved that main event. Loved the tag match on that show. WrestleMania was decent. I mean... I will say, for the most part, it had enough to make me go, okay, this is a passable WrestleMania. I'm not going to say it's one of the greatest of all time. I would put it in the mm, top half, if that is saying much. I mean, let's be real. After watching 33 WrestleManias, it's kind of hard at this point to determine which half all the shows go into, but if I ever do a ranking video, and the plan was to do one, unfortunately, my schedule has completely done away with that, so we'll see what happens with WrestleMania going forward, but in terms of where I rank this WrestleMania, definitely top half. Um, I wouldn't say top 10. I wouldn't maybe like number 12, 11, really close to it. Uh, there was enough stuff on the show to at least warrant it being a decent show. C+. Plus. I wouldn't say it's anything above that, quite frankly. Uh, favorite match still is Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. Love that match. It was awesome. I don't know why people say it wasn't that great because it was four minutes. Who cares? You can have a great match in five, four minutes. It's all about the story you tell. It's all about the performances. And I thought those two had the best performance of the entire weekend. Uh, Raw was good. Everybody's talking about Roman Reigns. And, you know, the more I think about it, that's something I still want to see what WWE does with. Because you have to think they can't book him like your traditional, traditional babyface anymore. You can't have him go out there and just work with other people that the fans like and then expect the fans to root him on. It's not going to work like that. And the heat he got on Raw, pure, pure heat. One of the purest forms of heat I have ever seen. So you have to think at some point, WWE has to realize, okay, the fans are not going to like this guy. So I have to see what they do with him because you can't just book him as a freaking baby face now. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. So we'll see where that goes. But when it comes to SmackDown, there are two things that come to mind immediately. First off, the debut of the Perfect Ten. Ty Dillinger, I think, seeing Ty on SmackDown. Refreshing. I don't know if I would have brought him up this soon. I kind of feel like he still has a story to go. Or uh, still has a story to complete. On NXT. I feel like... I would have expected him to fight Bobby Roode for that NXT Championship. And, you know what? They... Still might do it. I don't know. Well, actually, no. I saw some reports that Bobby is fighting someone else now. So, he's done. Ty is done with NXT. And, you know, again, it's one of those things where I'm like, maybe you could have kept him on there a little bit longer because I wanted to see him become NXT champion. But at the same time, he's so over at this point. Yeah, it was time to move him up. It was time to see what he does, how he can do, how well he can get over with the audience on the um, 
main roster. So let's see what happens with him. I think on SmackDown, he will be great. I would love to see him go for that IC championship. We'll see what he does. But the one that really hit me was Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke's debut gave me goosebumps, man. He made me feel like a wrestling fan. That was one of those debuts where I just was happy. I was happy. I was gleaming. I had a smile on my face. Seeing Shinsuke go out there, get an awesome entrance, see the audience react to him like he was a superstar, a megastar. And I just felt like, yes, finally, he is where he belongs. Yes, Shinsuke Nakamura is getting ready to take WWE by storm. I'm ready for this guy to become the man. He is. I think Shinsuke is going to be someone that's going to immediately connect with the audience. Immediately shoot himself right to that main event scene. And we might see him eventually become a WWE champion. This year? Very soon. I see that happening. And I can't wait for it. I think I can do so many matches with him. I kind of hope AJ doesn't go to Raw because I want to see Shinsuke and AJ again. I want to see Shinsuke and, with my prediction being what it is, Sami Zayn, Shinsuke and Cesaro, Shinsuke and Bray Wyatt, Shinsuke, Dolph Ziggler, Shinsuke. Man, we might see him the wrong one time. We'll see him fight John Cena. I almost hope The Miz stays on SmackDown so we can do him and Miz. So many things we can do with this guy. Uh, Shinsuke and Dean Ambrose, Shinsuke and Rollins. You know, maybe one day Shinsuke and Reigns. Now, okay, that's a match I would like to see. Even if he's not a heel, which honestly at this point, Reigns Reigns is the biggest heel in wrestling. He might be written as a babyface, which, again, I have to look at WWE and go, would you really do that at this point? Why would you do that? Just... Even if it's not the traditional heel writing, fine. I mean, you can have him be a badass heel. You can have him be a different kind of heel. Just, you can't tell me that this guy is now the top babyface in wrestling. You can't do that. But regardless of that, Shinsuke and Roman Reigns, awesome. I'm happy to have him on the main roster. I look forward to seeing what he does. In terms of other things about SmackDown. You know, I'm happy to see Naomi remain champion. She's a strong women's champion. And I said on my Twitter during the show, I said, it's not... look, I love Charlotte. I love Sasha. I love Bailey. I love Becky. I love all those uh, NXT women that, I, of course, I got invested in during their tenure. But I've always been invested in Naomi. I've always felt that Naomi never got the opportunities she should have gotten. Especially since you see Nikki and Brie and all these other women get opportunities that they don't deserve. I'm sorry. Naomi is someone that's always been deserving of those opportunities. And now that she's gotten it, now she's taken it, now she's world champion. Excuse me, women's champion. I don't know why I said world champion. I guess it kind of is compared to women. Whatever. Now that she's a champion, I kind of feel like we get to finally see what she's made of. And look at this. She's getting over. She is over. Massively. I, I'm telling you, man. Naomi, so far to me, when you think about Charlotte's streak ending, when you think about the lukewarm booking that Bailey's getting, as much as I love Bailey, and as much as I think uh, she can be like, a major superstar for the WWE with the right booking. Sasha kind of in limbo, and others just kind of there. Naomi, so far, is the one I'm looking at the most and going, yeah, she's awesome. So that's just me. I love Naomi right now. I think she's going to be a great women's champion. Uh, Don't know what to say about the tag teams, though. Again, the Hargies were brought back. Uh, Revival's on Raw. So at least the Raw's tag team division looks fresh. SmackDown, if anything else, needs some more tag teams. Because they just lost the Va Villains. I hear that Simon Gotch got suspended. So Va Villains are done. Uh, Ascension is nothing. Zack Ryder is injured, so you don't have Hype Bros anymore. I don't know, man. 
SmackDown needs some more tag teams. So we'll have to see what they do with that. All right, let me just go ahead and get this tangent out the way. One of the big marks I have on WrestleMania um, has to do with the WWE Championship. Bray Wyatt losing to Randy Orton, I didn't like. Now, a lot of you are saying, storyline-wise, it made sense for Randy Orton to beat Bray Wyatt. And you wouldn't be wrong, which is why I'm not going to go as far as to say they screwed up with Bray Wyatt. Because the loss made sense continuity-wise. In terms of the story they were telling, yeah, okay, Bray Wyatt had to lose, I guess. But I will say this. Apparently, we're going to do another match. Another match with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. I'm assuming this is going to be at the Backlash pay-per-view. Although, mm, that's a little ways off. We'll have to see what happens with that. Regardless, whenever they're having the match, they're doing a House of Horrors match. I'm assuming this is another... Yeah, you know, one of those matches where Bray Wyatt gets to display his mystical powers and we get to see him use mind games like he did at WrestleMania 33, which I thought was awesome. My thing about that match with Orton and Bray Wyatt, I love what they did with the projections. I love the mind games that Bray Wyatt tried to use on Randy Orton. It just didn't mean anything because he lost. That's what bothers me. Like, you do all this great stuff with Bray Wyatt, but it means nothing. It means nothing when he loses. So my thing is, if we're going to book Bray Wyatt as a main event player, and SmackDown has done a great job with that so far, I would hate for them to ruin it by having him lose again to Randy Orton. Whatever you're doing with these two, and I hope the plan is eventually to give that belt back to Bray Wyatt because Randy Orton doesn't need it anymore. He doesn't need it. He's a 13-time WWE champion. He doesn't need it. He's three away from tying John Cena and Ric Flair. He doesn't need any more championship runs. Whatever. Whatever the case is, I hope the plan is to give Bray Wyatt that championship back. Because people loved him as world champion. They are behind something that you created. If the idea is to create new stars. If the idea is to make fans invest and to care about these performers and their characters on TV, well, Bray Wyatt was someone the fans have invested in and do care. Every time he comes out, there are fireflies, excuse me, the phones come out, lights go on, people love him, they chant, he's got the whole world in his hands. People always talk about how they feel he should have beat John Cena at WrestleMania 30, how this guy can be the next Undertaker. I'm sorry, but who do you know ever got a statement like that? This guy can be the next Undertaker. You know, and I love Taker. You know, I think he's one of the greatest of all time. And for some people to say this guy, Bray Wyatt, can be the next greatest of all time. I just kind of feel like WWE, don't screw the pooch with this one. I am predicting this House of Horrors match will lead, and hopefully, they don't prove me wrong, but will lead to him getting his championship back. And he should. Because Bray Wyatt needs that run. Bray Wyatt needs to look strong. Don't have this guy win that belt. Have a mediocre run with it. After he beat AJ and John Cena just to get it. But have this mediocre run. Lose it at WrestleMania, making him the anti-taker because he can't win a match at WrestleMania for some reason. And then have him lose again to Randy Orton in this House of Horrors match. A match that he made. SmackDown, I've been up here for over half a year saying that you are the A show. You have an opportunity to really make a story, a comprehensive story with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. And complete a few that I thought has been one of the best WWE has done in a long time. Do not ruin it. By having Bray Wyatt lose to Randy Orton in the end. And then make Bray Wyatt feel like he's nothing. Like he doesn't belong there. Like he's broken goods. Seriously. He's at this point. He's at this point. So. How do I put this? He is so close to being someone. 
that's damaged, that there could be no point of return, if that makes sense. We need to be careful with Bray Wyatt. We got to be careful with how we book it. We got to be careful with the way we, uh, what do, I, what do I want to say, present him going forward. You know, I just want this guy to have the best opportunities that he can have, get the booking that he deserves, his character, which is an amazing character. We use it in a way where it benefits everybody, him, and the performers, and the fans. And I'm sorry, I just feel like this is a situation where if he doesn't beat Randy Orton, he's not going to mean much anymore. And I'm hoping SmackDown doesn't fall into that trap. I hope SmackDown doesn't do what Raw did with Bray Wyatt, book him so poorly to the fact, to the point where people stop caring about him and people don't really want to see him do much. And then we have to send him to SmackDown where he actually got the booking he should have always gotten. Now he's back over. So we're going to just do the same thing we did with him on Raw. Make him feel like he's something when he's, when he's really nothing. Make him be this big obstacle for Randy Orton who doesn't really need it because Randy Orton is a 13-time world champion. And then after we're done using him, he goes back to just being nothing. Obscure. Obscurity. Don't do that. Use this time right now to have Randy Orton put over Bray Wyatt. And make him a star. Make him a main event player. Because it's not like you can... It's not like you can create those nowadays. Right? So we'll see. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. That's my tangent. Uh, if you're asking me what I think a House of Horrors match is... Well, I've heard of this match before. Uh, the match that I'm thinking of, though, had barbed wire ropes and explosives... And it was more like a death match than anything else. I seriously doubt that's the match they're going to have. If anything, I'm expecting like one of those carnival matches. You know, they're backstage with mirrors. And then I see maybe Bray Wyatt playing some mind games and showing Randy Orton some horrific images of like Sister Abigail. Or like dark parts of his past. His ex or something dark that just... Screws with his mind. Something like that. That's what I'm expecting when it comes to a House of Horrors match. Uh, whatever the case is. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, whatever it is, it leads to Bray Wyatt getting his championship back. That's all I care about. Seriously, I don't give a damn about what match it is, how it turns out. I just want Bray Wyatt to get his championship back. Because, to me, he is... The guy that I want to have as my champion. For now. Now eventually he will have to drop it. And that's good. That's fine. He could drop it to Shinsuke Nakamura. And I would not complain about that. But as of right now. Bray Wyatt needs to win that championship back. Seriously. Let's establish a new guy. That's my tangent. I just feel like. Ugh, WWE has had Bray Wyatt for almost four years now. And I never really felt. They capitalized on what an awesome performer or an awesome character he is until recently don't screw it up smackdown don't make me look at you in a bad light don't screw up bray wyatt do this one right for me please please but yeah that's that's it guys that was more of a wrestlemania recap if anything else yeah i just feel like overall it was a good good overall weekend Hall of Fame, NXT, WrestleMania was decent, Raw was really good, and then SmackDown was good. No complaints. So, now we have to look forward to this WWE shakeup, which, you know, I'm going to do a video Saturday, Saturday, where I basically read the comments on the fan interaction video and talk about, you know, what fans are saying should happen. Whether I agree with that. And then I'll give you guys my list. I'm looking at... I was thinking about five for each show. I might make it ten. I might go ahead and list ten people from each show that I will trade to the other brand. And then, you know, see what I would do with that. Because I would think SmackDown gets a ton of tag teams. Because they literally lost two of them. So we'll see what happens. But give me your thoughts about... 
everything I talked about. WrestleMania weekend, um, SmackDown, Bray Wyatt, Shinsuke, Ty Dillinger. And then, of course, this Saturday, I'll catch you guys. I don't know. I don't know if I can make it live. I might be able to make it live. We'll see. But you will know. I'll let you know on Facebook and Twitter, which you should follow me on, by the way. And I will let you know ahead of time if I'm going live. And if I do go live, same format. I'll come up here. I'll read what you guys said. I'll even have a list just ready to go. And then we'll just have fun with it. And then Raw will be the Superstar Shake-Up. I'll come up here after the show, maybe live again. And we'll talk about the decisions made, if it was a good decision or not, to do what they did. But we will see. Thank you guys for watching. This is your boy, Deluxe Man, signing off. In Deluxe Man's World. Peace out.